Now, welcome along to the Sporting Life Time Form Weekend Preview. David Orr, joined by Matt Brocklebank and Richard Mann to look out to a couple of contests on Charity Day. Macmillan Charity Day at York, always a bumper crowd and a tremendous cause. Best of luck to William and the team there for proceedings. We're looking ahead first to the 305. It's a Skybet race to the e -ball. Grand Cup, the last chance to guarantee your place in the £500,000 Ebro at York. That's what's on offer for the winner. Time for ratings, Israel 130, Quickthorn 129, eight pounds back to Outbox. Matt, that suggests two horses are going to dominate this. Is that is that how it looks to you? Um, it does look that way to me, yeah. I think, uh, obviously, you've got to uh, give a fair amount of respect to uh, Roberto Escobar, who's only fourth on the list, but he does... Have, have to carry a penalty in this race. It could make it a little trickier for him. Um, Isra is top and the, the horse in, uh, in focus there on the picture. Um, and he looks potentially the class act because I say potentially, the other kind of uh, principles here are, are six-year-olds. Obviously, we've got an eight-year-old in Outbox as well. But here we're looking at a John and Thady Gosden trained four-year-old in Isra and uh, a horse that's already made a very encouraging comeback run when narrowly denied at Newbury. We've got video of that. We can look at Israel make, making that uh, seasonal reappearance. And as you say, Matt, you look at this as a, a launch pad for seasonal. There's plenty to like about it. Oh, loads to like about it for several seconds, I'd He's say. in the blue and white striped cap, isn't he? Yeah, well, so. he comes to pick up, is it Bolshoi Ballet? He comes to pick him up and he looks like he's going to win the race. Um, only to be nabbed by Dottori on Hasco, who's subsequently been uh, sadly retired due to injury. But Israel, yeah, here comes with a, a, a really strong run. Um... He, he could easily have won on a different day. This, uh, as you say, it looks like a perfect launch pad. He's got that little burst of speed, hasn't he, as well? He's a, a son of Muhara. He handles soft ground really quite well, like a lot of his, um, his sire's progeny, but he does also go on quicker ground as well, and we're looking at, uh, no doubt, shh, fast enough ground at uh, York this weekend. Yeah, we've got Quickthorn in there, Richard. We saw one pound below Israel on... Time for ratings. Also, could be very effective at York. He's going to get out and roll. You know what you're going to get with him? Yeah, absolutely. He'll get a really aggressive ride. I mean, last year we beat Coltrane 14 lengths at York. Um, that was over two miles, but that's how effective he is at this track. I think the really interesting point was last year he went on a bit of a winning, uh, winning spree, but he took two runs to get him spot on, and he's had two runs this year, and I just feel that we might get a season's best on Saturday. I think he's got a massive chance. Matt, you touched upon Roberto Escobar, and you pulled out one other from that Time Farm ratings graphic. We've got video of him in action at Sandown again in May. William Haggis loves winners at the at the um, at York and the Naysmire. Could this be another then? It, and it does look like Haggis uh, Yard has turned a corner just as we, in the last kind of week really as well. So a positive for him. He, another positive obviously is that Roberta Escobar won here uh, the Henry II uh, at Sandown during a period in which Haggis wasn't necessarily firing. Um, he just about toughed it, toughed it out here. He showed real guts and heart, I thought, to, uh, to see out the two miles. He probably isn't naturally a, a proper two-miler by nature, so dropping back to a mile and six is going to suit him. But he come, just about holds uh, Nate the Great here um, at Sandown. Nate the Great, um, you know, a very useful horse in his day, rated 107. But as I say, Roberto Escobar subsequently now um, in this listed race has to carry the Group 3 penalty. So it is going to make it hard. Look, he's giving weight to horses that are officially rated higher than he. Let's have a look at the pace map. So we're expecting Quickthorn to jump off Rich. That's the, the, that's his way. That's his modus operandi. There's a few others, though, aren't there? We're going to want to go forward. Is that a worry for you? It is a little bit. If you're a Quickthorn fan, that would be the, the conundrum, really, because Outbox likes to go forward, always aggressively ridden. As we've seen there, Roberto Escobar coming back in trip. And, and to me, front running really suited at Sandown. He found plenty for pressure. So tactics will be fascinating. I think Jason Hart and Quick Thorn will have to be careful. He won't want to get into a massive battle and it, it could potentially set it up for someone in here. Obviously Isra looks like the one that'll travel in behind them but um, Quick, Quick Thorn to me looks sort of the class age. Quick Thorn for Rich, Matt, selection time? Yeah, I think Isra will be really hard to beat here. Obviously we're looking at a, an, an Ebor race. Um, some of these horses are going to be maybe caught between Ebor and group races. Isra has entered in the um, Irish St. Ledger later in the season. I think they could be looking at real top races. He won second time out um, last season, 
Um, as long as he doesn't bounce from the comeback, obviously when he won at Doncaster last year, he, he was turned out quite quickly just a, uh, a couple of weeks later for the November handicap when he went off favourite and did bomb out that day. But I think we could put that down to the quick turnaround and the heavy ground and uh, he's been given a month off since Newbury. So yeah, very much the horse to beat for me, but priced accordingly. Before we move on, make sure you click like and subscribe and also click on that notification bell to be notified of all of our latest videos. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. So look at the £100,000 Oakmere Homes Apartment Millen Sprint Handicap, one of the big three-year-old sprint handicaps of the year. We've got the time farm ratings for this. This is ultra competitive and it's a cracking race. You get a headache even trying to work it out. Top rated Quinn Alt Matt. He's a top clear by £1 but with a P. Do you think there's much more progression? to come? I do, I wouldn't be shocked. He's a fascinating horse, this Quinault. Um, he's a real kind of riches to rags and back to riches story. He was a 310,000 guinea breeze up purchased by Godolphin. He actually ran once for Charlie Appleby, finishing last. Um, and then he changed hands for about 30 grand later that year and was snapped up by the shrewd Stuart Williams. He had a couple of runs in Maidens on the All Weather um, in February earlier this year and then has absolutely taken off since uh, being switched to handicaps. He's won four races um, over six furlongs and one was over seven furlongs as well. Uh, rising from a, a basement rating of 59 right up to his current 85 officially. Um, and Connor Planet, a good uh, real rising star of the Wayne Room, I think. He's been booked to take off five pounds this weekend. Um, and the way that he won at Newmarket last month, you, you certainly wouldn't put it past him having a bit more improvement. We've got the video of that that win at Newmarket. What, what was it you liked about this performance? Well, if you go back to the time before this as well, he actually won at Newmarket as well. So he was defying a penalty here. The time before, he was kind of out in the centre of the course, totally on his own. And you sort of thought, well, is that was he a little bit biased there? And was he a, almost a little bit fortunate? But here, slap bang down the middle with the green cap and he was prominent throughout and really kept finding it. And if you just get towards the end of this race, he's, he's, he's put them away here and he wins with loads in hand. I think he's uh, definitely a, a massive, massive improver. And just look at the way he's gone past the post. It's not like all out drive, is it? He, this is not a horse coming to the end of his tether. Also here, you'd have to think that his style of racing is gonna be suited uh, to York. I'm sure we'll get around to potential pace angles later. That might be the one stumbling block with this horse. Yeah, no, I'd agree. It's perfect style for yours. Horses, sprinters especially, like to get rolling dirt. They're from three to two to one. And he just looks spot on for that new market and York form generally replicate well. We can get the pace map up here, Rich, because a horse I know was on your shortlist and was on mine as well, Rabba, for, for Charlie Hills and the, the Shadwell Estate team. That's He's a horse who's going to go forward himself, isn't he? Yeah, well, he, looks, he just looks very keen, doesn't he? He looks an out-and-out -out sprinter. But Charlie Hills, for, for these silks, he's got a terrific record with, with sprinters group one sprinters over the years uh, and I thought he ran okay at Newbury I think that'll turn out to be a good race look Noble Style was fourth in there um, he's 12 to 1 now for the Commonwealth Cup next week at Royal Ascot so that tells you what people think about the farm and it was his first real race wasn't it at Newbury let's be honest he won a couple of novices prior to that Mickey Mouse races at Lingfield and Wolverhampton <laughs> that was the acid test I suspect that we're a long way from his ceiling. Now, whether we see that on Saturday, time will tell, but I, I think he's definitely well handicapped at the moment. What's he off 97? I think there's more to come. He's definitely interesting. The pace pressure was that side as well. as He's going to come under a little bit of pressure. The pace can obviously hold up on the sprint course at York, but um, just back to Quinault, he looks potentially like he might get marooned more towards the centre of the course. That would be my, my negative where they may be um, sort of go towards the far rail um, with the pace up the middle to far side. Matt Lyon on Quintus Avius? Yeah, he's a, he's a really nice horse. I think he's a bit raw. He's a bit of a work in progress. He won the Skybet uh, Sunday Series race at Hamilton the other week. I could sort of see this horse. He's trained by Kevin Ryan. I think he might um, either get seven furlongs or want a bit of juice in the ground. I sort of see him as a little bit of a, an air bronze cup project maybe later in the season. He might get run off his feet this weekend. Selection time, Rich. Garner, I know was on your short list. Is it Garner or Rabba? Yeah, I'm going to go for Garner, actually. Again, similar to Rab, I just won a couple of Mickey Mouse races on the all-weather, but he just really impressed me with what I've seen. He looks a bull of a horse, a proper sprinter. I think 88, again, won't be the ceiling of his ability. And I know we talk a lot about Archie Watson and, and early types and two-year-olds, but actually I think he's really good with three- and four-year-old sprinters, and I think Garner's another nice project. Drawn in seven, uh, drawn in four, sorry, near Rabba in seven. I think they'll hopefully one will get a nice tough the other anyway. I'll probably back both, but Garner will be my pick. 
That selection time? Two for me, Dave. Safari Dream each way, I think, might hang tough. I think Sky Better Pay is seven places on this race. That's obviously <coughs> really generous. Uh, trained by Rob Millman. He's got the, the cheek pieces on first time. I think he stays six villains. If he's going to stay somewhere, he'll stay at, at York uh, on, on quick ground. The other one is Millstream Top Weight. Could be the real class act in the field. He still ended up in the Commonwealth Cup and the July Cup. Um, as, as we speak, is every right to be, considering what he showed last year. He pushed that... Um, uh, Noble style quite close at Newmarket, second time out. He was fourth to Chaldean in the Acom Stakes, obviously a little bit of uh, course experience is no harm as well. And I think we can probably scrap the, the Sandy Lane run at uh, uh, Haydock. He was up against Little Big Bear and you had Brad Sell, who's rated 114 in there as well. Cold case, a nice horse. It was a good race. He sweated up. I don't think that was his true running. Marco Ghiani, incidentally, who's been riding uh, Quinault, the favourite, Obviously, switches to this horse. He could be, uh, could go well at a price. Yeah, I quite fancy him as well. I think the setup um, could be ideal for him. My voice has gone, so it's the time for the the curtain to come down. Thanks to Matt and thanks to Rich. And best of luck with your own Saturday bets.